Hello, and today I will be presenting this container with the Spring Boot. It is a high overview of how we can configure this library using the Spring Boot, Spring Boot and Java. And of course, a few benefits. I, I would explain you a brief the agenda. So just to let you know a little bit a bit um, more about me, I am a software engineer. I have a few nine, 10 years of experience, especially on Java. So hopefully, hopefully my experience with the Spring Boot is going to be useful for you. So let's let's go ahead. This is the agenda for today. We are going to start like what test containers, like dependencies. Uh, I I will explain you in Maven especially because that's that's the the way how I usually configure it. Of course, we can do it in Gradle and in other like this. These are like the two more common so. Maven we will use in this case. I will explain you also uh, the communication diagram, like in all these, uh, this is a REST uh, project. So I I am going to explain you like the, co the common way to get into an API, what's the, the different layers that we have during this communication and where exactly uh, test containers comes into the picture. So I am going to explain also a bit about the integration testing and unit testing. This is like a, from the developer perspective and the regular way that we need to apply this knowledge during our daily work, right, in our projects. The benefits, of course, and a, a bit um, and a small demo where we can show these benefits, the configuration especially. Uh, a few examples with a really, really simple REST, uh, um, REST project where we are going to add and remove a few um, records from database. So let's let's go ahead. Test containers, this is the definition for from test containers web page. It's basically, it says it's a library that supports JUnit and it can run as, uh, any database that can be containerized. For example, Postgres, it could be uh, it could be Postgres, it could be MySQL, Oracle, etc. It, it can be also for Selenium. So this is the, the logo, this containers. Really simple. And it's not only for Java. This is the good thing that if you are also part of some other communities or if you want to get um, this knowledge to any other um, language that you use, these are the other languages supported. For example, Go and .NET, Python. So this, this library has a really good acceptance from the community, especially because the configuration is not that hard. And every time they are working on creating some new features and with really a small configuration at, from the developer side. So what are the prerequisites? Really, really simple. Docker is like the first, the first one because we explained that this is a containerized. Uh, we it needs a database that can be containerized, right? So Docker, of course, Java in this case, since we are going to do the demo with this with Spring Boot, and we have also Maven and Gradle that are only for the dependencies part. Um, here we have JUnit four and JUnit five. Um, so JUnit3 is not available for in, in this case. So we can use JUnit4 and JUnit5 or Jupyter. So these are the prerequisites and the dependencies. I copied this from, from my code. It's really simple. We have all the, the configurations, of course, from the project are going to be more extensive. For example, the JPA, the um I don't know the tokens for security, etc. But related to to a cloud test for from test container, sorry, we are only needing the core dependency that you can see here. This test containers, and you can use the latest version and the database you are going to use. So in this case, we are going to use Postgres. But as I mentioned before, we can use MySQL, we can use Oracle DB and any containerized database. So 
let's explain a little bit about the communication diagram. So imagine we have a user that is using an application or or um, an app, whatever. So what they usually do is they are going to connect to our REST API, right? This REST API is, is the one that we are going to build, for example, and it is executed in the Spring Boot. So this REST API is connected to a business logic, which is this, this brain here. So the, the REST API is exposed in a port, uh, usually the 80, 80, 80, right? And uh, the finally, this application gets connected to a database. This database is again uh, MySQL, Postgres, etc. So this is like the high, really high over picture about the communication when we are working on on API projects like REST API projects mostly. So. And here, what we are trying to do is like, every time we are trying to create test cases, we cannot use, or we must not use a database. Um, why? Because when we are consuming data from a database, let's say in AWS, we are paying for it, right? So we can save cost if we don't use a real environment. So what, um, this container is trying to provide it's remove the latest the latest uh, phase here on the communication so where you are not going to use like uh i'm not saying a real database but a, a database that you are paying for it it, it it is going to provide you a dockerized database where you are going to be able to have the complete environment you are going to have your application running where actually is going to trigger the execution for this containerized database, and your software, your your project is going to connect to the to the container that is executing the the SQL or MySQL database, and the flow is exactly the same as before. So the only thing is that you are not considering um your data your databases that you have in, in your environment. You are going to use um, a, a, a containerized database. So what happened do, during the test? Usually a Spring Boot have all the dependencies, the configuration, et cetera, which is going to create a REST API, right? Like in this case, of course we can use some other approaches, but in this case, we are talking mostly about REST APIs. So, Test containers at that site is going to have a Postgres SQL uh, image in this case, which is a containerized. What have they in common at this at this at this moment? They are going to run in a random port. This is this is really important. For example, when we are creating an an Spring Boot uh, project, usually we are explaining into a, a the application properties. Uh, we want this project to run in a port 8080, which is the default, or 8081, right? We, we can we can change it whenever we want. And that's good that that's for production because when we have a multi, um, an environment with a lot of uh, REST projects running, we need different ports, of course, for the communication, et cetera. So, in this case, when we are executing the test, we are running the project in a, in a random port. It, a Spring Boot is going to check what is the random port that uh, in a list that it's available, and it is going to pick up one of them. Same thing for test containers. Uh, usually we have a port allocated for our uh, database. So in this case, when, when the Spring Boot is executing the project for the first time, it will let test container to pick up one of the available ports and set the configuration for for the uh, database. So once we have this configuration ready and the project is successfully executed, 
is where J unit came into the picture, right? So that is what we are going to, to talk about. So J, J unit is going to go directly to the to the REST API using we can use a REST client or we can use the the controller directly. So J unit is going to trigger the is going to execute the REST API that we have already configured. And at that moment, the Spring Boot project already knows where is the data source. In this case, Postgres. Uh, we said that it's in a random port, but the configuration is is so intelligent, so it, it will recognize and it will understand how to communicate with the database, and it will return the the response, right? The assertions or whatever we want to execute later in JUnit. So that's basically the the communication with with test containers and and JUnit. The the only thing that is different, as I mentioned before, is that instead of connecting to a database that we have every time running, like for example, in test environment or QA environments, what it is going to do is it is going to create a new Docker image with a with a Postgres or MySQL database to execute the the the, the project. And what are the benefits? You can say we we can. We can explain in a little bit. Just let me go first with what we usually do in, in our different layers. So this is like, again, um, a common structure of a project that most of the developers probably use, which is the controller, the service, the converters, or any other helper we use, and the database, right? So this is like the high perspective overall perspective so in the controller what what we usually test in the controllers the content type the payload the parameters this is like our entry point for the communication in the service what we usually test is the business logic and the communication with some other resources probably some other dependencies some other um rest, rest services even right that are not allocated in, in our project. And the converters are mostly like, the, the very common is like to convert the entity object to a response object, which is like the DTO that we called, or uh, vice versa, right? Um, we can apply also some or transformations, like, or we, if we want to add prefix, or we want to change a little bit, a few fields from, from the identity. And in the database, we have the crude operations, of course. So what happened here? If you see these different layers, controller, service, converter, and database, when a developer is working in a project, most of the times we are using Mojito, which is like probably everyone is working with Mojito. And what we do is like, we go layer by layer and we create tests. We create one test for the controller where we are providing this information like content type, payloads, parameters. And we can check there if it's not null, if it is the content type we are expecting, um, length, some, some most of, a, a bit more, but this is like the common actions, right? Then we create a class to test that specific controller. Then we go to the next layer, we go to the service and we start again, providing the information to test the business logic that in some cases is, is a bit complex. And here is probably the, the most important thing because here in the service, it, it depends on the project, but sometimes we need to connect to the database. We are expecting to, to receive an object or we are trying to communicate to some other project, to some other REST API. And we also need to process that information, right? So what happened here in the service? When we are working with Mojito, we are mocking objects. It's not real data, right? So we are assuming that we are going to receive some information. And sometimes from the developer perspective, we are not aware of how that information is going to be or how is, uh, what's 
what's the real uh, way to express that information? And so when we are assuming, it's not good, right? So sometimes we are missing some information, some uh, requirements, and it's when we start with the issues. So here at the service, again, using Mokito, we are mocking objects, doing this communication, but not with test containers because, okay, well, there is one case. Here in the service, when we are connecting to a database, using test containers, we can do it like in the real, like if we are executing the real service. If we are connecting to some external sources, then again, we need Mokito, right? For that case, we need Mokito. So the next layer is the converter. Again, this is only for transforming the information, not, not much to do, but again, we need some test classes for also cover that code, right? With the code coverage is, import, is important for all the developers. And the crude operation, first, of course, um, to persist the data, to get the data, the lead data, right? So let's talk. This is like this, each layer, we can see like individual test. It's what we have, um, the, the J -un we have J unit, and we are working mostly on each layer. Again, we need some end-to-end -end testing that we can cover, but um, sometimes it is hard to cover. Well, so as a developers, we prefer to go like individual for each action and cover most of the code. So what are the benefits? We are going to explain it a little bit and I, we will show you in, in during the demo. So the configuration in a Spring Boot is minimal. We don't need really like a, a huge dependencies or a huge uh, configuration files. The database is isolated. As I mentioned, we are running our project. The database is created in, in a container. So every time you execute your test, it is going to create a new, a new database that is going to be terminated when your when when your J unit are over, right? So you don't need to clean up the data. You don't need, like for example, in test environments, right? Where we have a test database that is running most like twenty four hours every day. If you are working in some batch processing or some applications that are inserting data, you must be guaranteeing that your data is not affecting others because most of the time these QA environments are shared by, by the dev, dev team. So here, one of the benefits is that uh, you have your own database. It is going to execute the test there. It is going to create the database with the information it needs to be executed. And at the end, it is going to be terminated. Um, it supports any containerized database, as I mentioned. Um, the database that we are working with has the complete set of features. It, it is not like, for example, the in-memory database that are a bit different, right? Uh, in this case, we are running any database that we want, and it has the, the whole set of features that uh, so we can go directly and test and we can be sure that at the moment we are migrating to production it is going to be of course the same database and it guarantees the the compatibility so uh, most of the times we don't need to mock the information except for the external dependencies or services or resources and it is easy to integrate and to test when we are migrating databases version. For example, if we are migrating from uh, Postgres, I don't know, 10 from for 2 to 12, we can just go to the configuration for for the um, test containers. We migrate it and we run the, the whole set of features. So this is a few of the benefits. Again, the, about the pricing, since we are not using a, a real database for for testing, it is also reducing the the cost, right? And it can be integrated, for example, with Jenkins, with CloudBees, or with any CI/CD tool. So it's 
it's really it's really great. Now let's let's go ahead and check the demo. I created a project. It's a, a really basic project. Uh, I am not going to cover all the details, but as I mentioned, is is a REST. Uh, it's an, in the Spring Boot. It's a REST project. We have a controller. We have mostly the the same layers that I explained. We have the the service, which in this case is the controller, because we don't have any complex business logic. So. Uh, we have the model, which is like only the repo and the entity. We have the converter that, well, that I also mentioned before, right? Which is using the DTOs. And it, this is a, the, the typical uh, example, right? About when, when we are learning, we probably, <laughs> we probably use the same example that uh, employees or movies or cars. <laughs> Probably these are like the three common ways to learn a new thing. So I decided to take the movies. Uh, this is a movies REST API where we are going to have two, two methods exposed, which is the post to insert a movie, of course, and the get to get the list of movies. So as I mentioned, there is not really a business logic here. We only have the to model and the to DTO, right? So we are iterating directly the database. But before getting into that level, let's explain a little bit about the configuration. Here you can see some SQLs, right? And we can see here in the configuration, we only need two files for the configuration. One is the Postgres container config that you can see here, it's um, when you're using JPA in a Spring Boot, it needs a data source, right? So when it is auto-configured, it will try to, to look for how to create these, these data source. So in this case, excuse me, we are using a Postgres SQL container. It's really easy, this, this is coming from test containers, right, which is the, the um, dependency that I, I, I we, we talked about before. And we are specifying a Docker image. So what is this? The Docker image name is, is the version. So we need to specify what's the version that we want to run and that's it. It will create for us the, it's only two lines, right? Simple. Here, all this information is just to show you, like when we are creating this data source, we are able to connect to it. It is again in Docker, but we are able to connect. So we need to know what's the database name, user password, and what is the JDBC URL, right? To be able to connect. And this is again the, the bin to use this configuration. So that's from the Postgres perspective. Now here, it's, let me show you. This is the other one, DB config test, where again, we are going to have this, this data source and we are going to use um, the entity manager, right? Probably, uh, as you know, we can use this application manager where we are uh, able to, to open the connection and close the connection. But in this case, we want to delegate it to Spring Boot, so we are not going to cover these details. Uh, this is a really simple configuration. So it's a, a container entity manager. It, it is going to get the information. It is going to to create the uh, the manager, and let's we we don't have we only have to use it. So as you mentioned, it's really simple, right? And with the latest versions, I have to mention that there is a new way to to use test containers. We can go directly and start like at test containers. And we just need a really a smaller configuration than this. But in my case, I think this looks more like a real um, 
project that we use in 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 the professional environment. So I decided to to go ahead here and, and cover because here we are only able to create like the transaction manager and to specify a little bit more about the um, the configuration we want, right? Mm -hmm. So that that's why I decided to to have it in this way. So this is all we need from the configuration perspective. And let me show you first here, movies controller, right? We have the health check, insert and get movies. Most of the developers know that when we are working in some APIs, we need to create tests to cover all, all the code, right? So we need to create probably two or three or four scenarios for the same for the same um, uh, REST service uh, to, to cover for the code coverage and of course for the different scenarios, especially when we are working with a QA team where they have this traceability matrix where they are sharing the different scenarios. So here I have two classes for testing them. One is the executing the real service, as I mentioned before, we are not going to mock anything. And we have the other, which is like the common way to, to create this, the test, which is mocking information, right? So let, let's go ahead and test the, the first one. The... Let me execute it first and I will, I will explain a little bit about how the, the output here. Okay, so let, let's take a look here. Oh, I, I forgot to mention something. Uh, I am using uh, a library. Let me show you. Which is Flyway. Probably you know about it. Uh, I am not going to cover that topic. It's just, uh, it's just to let you know about it. It's, Flyway is a is also a library. It's a tool that allows us, as a developer, to maintain the database version. Uh, what it means, like we we have, for example, this one. This is the V1 initial tables, right? What it does is like okay, here we have an SQL file which is going to create a tables, a table movies. So it means like every time we execute it. It uh, Flyway is going to check. Okay, what's the version we have? Okay, we have a new version. Then it applies the the, the new version to the database. So in this case, we have Flyway also integrated for the DB creation. That that's it. So every time we are we are executing the the test containers automatically, it is going to check. Okay, what's the what's the version we have? Since it's new every time, it's isolated. It is going to create a new a new a new table every time, right? And it is going to apply this version to the database, which guarantees that we have the information, or even if we want to have mock data or some information there in the table, we can also create a new file to insert the data, right? So that's that that's how how Flyway is working here. So if we see here in the output. Of course, we are using a test, a test profile. I'm not going to explain about that. And here it is not assigned in the port yet, right? So let me go a little bit more here. And okay, what's happening here? It is creating a test, it is executing the test container. And test containers right after it is going to create a container for Postgres 13. Right, so it tries to create it and it executes. Finally, we get all this information that that we show here in in our configuration file. So if you see this time, this is the port, right? Five hundred thirty-one. What what happened if we execute it again?
See, it's different. Every time we execute in it, it's different. But the configuration, it's already able to handle that, and it is it is going to be to, it's going to be able to allocate whatever port it is using. So after the con first test container comes into the picture, then it creates the the Docker image, and then this is the flyware where the flyware thing. It is uh, checking the version and applying the, the version one, right? And that's it, that's only for preparing the database. And after that, it says, okay, it's ready. And again, this port is random. So let's see how, how it works. This is like the overall, okay, I have here the show SQL. And let's go here. The configuration again, it's simple. We are using a Spring Runner. This is using a random port, a Spring Boot test random port. If you're, if you see, we have this annotation, which is local server port. And, uh, oh, this is really important. Every time we are, we have a, a test class, we need to import the DB config test. Which is one of the of the files that we explained before, where we are creating the um, what's the name, the entity manager, right? So that that's really important. If you're important, it, it is not going to work. Uh, active profiles again. This is for this is a single profile we have right now, which is test. We can have also multiple environments for testing, so we it's like a list or we can use, a, you can use a single one. So here, the integration test, we have one, one example here, right? Let me debug it just to show you how we can connect to the database. If you want to debug or to check the database, because remember the database is going to be present only during the time the the, the test is, is getting executed. Uh, if you want to see the information after that, it's not going to be possible because it's going to be terminated. So if you want to see in real time what's happening here, you need to debug and you need to get this configuration, right? Mm -hmm. You need the, in this case, I am going to use DB Ever. This is going to be really quick because that's not really important. Um, the port and its localhost, database is test, username is test, and password is test. Right, test connection, okay. This is the schema we are using, the demo. And if you see, already Flyway created for us the movies table, and it also created the Flyway schema history, which is like only to apply the version, right? Every time there is a new version, it is updating here the, the information. So at this moment, we don't have anything in, in our table, right? It's empty. So if you see here, we are trying to insert a movie from our test. Let's do it. We can we come here and we say, oh, okay, here, here we have the information. And again, this is in a Dockerized database, right? Really simple. So what happened here? Since we are using the real service and the real database with the configuration, it it's present uh, like the same configuration for the database in production that for dev, it, it will be the same, right? Because we are using in this case Flyway. So let me finish this. It passed, but let's, let's take one scenario, right? And this is like the happy path. What happened if we have something different here? Let's try with Madagascar Dog. Two. Let's execute it.
in this case, it fails, right? So this is the importance of integration testing. And this is one of the benefits versus Mokito, because in Mokito, we are assuming that something is going to happen or some entity is returning some object in, in, in some way. So what happened here is value too long for type character, right? What's that issue? If we, if we check the initial tables where we are creating the, the movies table, we can see that name is only for 10 characters, right? So of course, that's going to be a problem because every time we are trying to insert something bigger, so one second, please. Yeah, because um, if we try to insert something with more characters than 10, it's going to throw that issue, right? And that's only um, that's only going to be able if we are doing a good integration testing. So let's go back and let's check what's happened with the mock, right? Same example. In this case, uh, okay, let me... Maybe do it in the same way. Let's test again the movie. We are in testing insert movie, but in this case, when it tries to save to the database, we are mocking the object, right? We are mocking the response. If you see here, it's we are assuming that this is the, the importance that I mentioned before. We are assuming that when it tries to insert, it is going to create these kinds of of object, which in this case is going to have the, the movie name, right? And the problem is that we as a developer, sometimes we don't have the control or it's it's really hard to have all the validations that we, the, the database uh, requires, right? Like in this case, the length. So what's happening here? Let, let's go ahead. We are going to, to execute it. This is like the happy path we talked about before. It passed, right? Same thing. If we say, okay, the length is more than 10. If we execute it, again, it passes, it passes, right? What, what's the issue here? When we are using Mokito, Again, we are assuming responses, insertions, communication with some other applications. And this is like the most common issues. And sometimes when there are big projects that are not using or not or are, are not having a dedicated uh, test environment where we can run this integration testing, this is this is mostly the issues that we are going to get every time. Like we as a developers we cannot control that part, right? Because we are not having the, the tools. So test containers is providing us that, um, that way to test end-to-end -end testing when we are having these kind of projects. <laughs> Sorry. And let, let me show you something. So that's, here we test, like we, we check one of the benefits, right? Like with Mojito or it's isolated. Every time we run it, it's running in a different project. So this is like the benefits I explained before. But what happened wait, when we are only trying to get information? Or also here, let's say we are testing um, some, some record that needs requires some dependency in the tables from some other um, entities, right? So we need to create that information. Like in this case, we are not going to mock data. We are going to create real data that is going to be persisted in, in our database. And in that way, we are going to be able to work or play with that, with that information. Let's take this example. It's get movies. Right, this is going to test our get API, of course. 
we have here an SQL script, right? Which is here in our resources from the test project. We have these ins um, insert movies. What is going to do? It is going to insert two values, frozen two and Madagascar, right? So it is going to insert two records in our database. So a simple assertion, we are expecting two records from database. Initially, it is going to come here. Again, it's going to create the container, the database, flyway. And after it is ready, it is going to come here and insert whatever script we, it is going to execute whatever script we have in the configuration. It is going to insert, in this case, the movies. It is going to run the project. And here, if you see after each, I have also the clear movies table the script. It means that every time we execute a test, we are, we are guaranteeing that the information in, in the database is going to be clear, right? So let's, let's test it. Yeah, we, we got it. Right, it, it it passes. So again, it works in the same way, but let's take into the picture this this get API with this integration testing. We sorry with this uh, end to end testing, we are able to test that. But what happened we if we are using Mokito? In this case, the, the controller will, let's say that our, our business logic is really simple, right? It is only connecting to the database. It's connecting to the database and it is converting it into a response object. That's it. If we are using Mokito, we need to mock what it's going, what find all is going to do. So in this case, again, we are assuming what's the return objects. So in an end-to-end -end test, let's say we have a, for example, this one. We are testing. We are testing an insert, assertions on that, and then we are testing a get movies, right? Where we are expecting only one, of course. This should pass, hopefully. Oh, sorry, it's not like a script. Yeah, see? You are able to control all the information during the whole flow. You don't need to mock anything. You can persist the data and you can then get the data from, from database, like in most of the real scenarios. So in this way, you can work with integration testing. And even from here, you are able to test all the different layers. As I explained before, usually we as a developer we are working on the different layers to create individual tests for the unit testing, right? But here with the integration testing, we are also covering that part. If there is some validation, for example, here in insert movie, if you see, if it's null, it is going to return this, this status exception, response status exception. So here we are not validating the length. That's one of the issue that you say, okay, you as a developer needs to cover that. But some cases, as I mentioned, we don't, we cannot control all the different scenarios and configuration. And this is one of the benefits when we are working with integration testing and Spring Boot is providing that information. So yeah, that's it, I think. Uh, this is this is basically what, what I wanted to share, like the benefits here and how we can access and configure and test this, this um, with this example using, using, using test containers and Docker.
So let's let's go to the questions and responses section. Yeah, we have actually one question, Yuri, please. Yeah, go ahead, Yuri. So uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, so I am not sure or I understand like, the life cycle of the test containers. So when we start a, a test container, will it last for all of the uh, all of the tests or just uh, one test or uh, just test in uh, this particular particular test class? Yeah, it, it's going to be for a class. You can execute it. Like in this case, what I used to do is like in our implementation here, most of the times when I am working on the test, I have here an after each or after all, right? Because it's going to create the Docker. It is going to execute it. So we want to clean up the information probably after each test. And yeah, here also we have the test instance lifecycle per class. So uh, I uh, do understand you correctly that basically we create uh, a new uh, container for each uh, test class. Yeah. Yeah, if I am not wrong, it works in that way. Is it possible uh, to create one container for all of the test classes and all of, let's say I have uh, a, you know, a big database with a big seed and I don't want uh, to create a, for, for uh, every test class a, a new container. I just want to reuse, is it possible to reuse the same test container for all the uh, classes? Mm, not sure, I, I never do that before i have never done that before usually i test for each class because the the information is like different and most of the times we have some configuration sql scripts that we execute every time we are getting into a new uh, into a new class but th that's a good question um, i think that that should be possible it it, it must be possible but I, I don't have the answer at this moment, sorry. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, we have a question in the chat. Could you please check it? Oh, let me see. Oh, it says that we can use any container database, right? That's how the... That's what the library said. Like if we have a DB uh, uh, for this, uh, what's the name? This for IBM. Um, if we have that in a container, we can go ahead and run it. Honestly, in my case, from my from my perspective, that the the experience that I have, I have always worked only with my SQL and Postgres, with the configuration it provides, right? which is here, the this configuration that post containers is providing you the images. But what the what this container said is that, yeah, we, we can go ahead and use any Docker image, even if it's your own definition, right? Uh, I don't have experience with that, but that's what they said, that we can use any container Probably it, it, it will be good if we can test it, right? To create our own definition. But yeah, 